Today we're going to be talking about the different kinds of text structures or the way the author organizes the text. There are five different kinds of text structures that we are going to be focusing on. The first is descriptive, the second is cause and effect, third problem and solution, fourth compare and contrast, and the last one we are going to be talking about is not one long word, it's just synonyms for it that you might see it called in different places. So it could be called chronological, sequence, or order. So let's get started. The first one we are going to be talking about today is descriptive. And as you notice, I have everything set up. We're going to go over the definition, clue words that you can use in order to help you figure it out, a visual you could use if you were trying to map it out, and an example of what it would sound like if you were reading it in a text. So first off, like I said, we're talking about descriptive. And if you define descriptive, it means text provides details or characteristics of something. So pretty much your text is going to be describing something. Clues that you can look for include adjectives, characteristics, examples, and a mental image. So when the author is telling this descriptive structure to you, your brain should almost be painting a picture. Um, and we'll get to it in just a second. A visual you could use is just a plain bubble map where you would put the topic in the middle and then you could put characteristics or adjectives around it that describe it. Okay. And the last thing we're going to have is an example. So here's my example. I did all my examples based on ice cream. Ice cream is a frozen, sugary, sweet delicacy. The treat comes in flavors like vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. So if I were doing a bubble map on this one, I would put ice cream in the middle and then I could find different adjectives and characteristics that describe ice cream, like frozen, sugary, sweet. I could also put in the different kinds like vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Let's go to the next text structure. Oops. The next one we're going to talk about is cause and effect. And we're all very familiar with cause and effect, but this is the structure that completely talks about nothing but why something happens and what happens. Okay, So the text tells about an event, which would be your cause, and the effects that follow. Okay, So some of the clue words you would look for is cause, effect, because, as a result of, due to, if, and then. So those are pretty much the same clue words we would do if we were looking at cause and effect in a story. A visual that you could use, or a graphic organizer, would be where you put the cause in this box and tell the different effects that comes from it. Okay, here's our example. If melted ice cream gets on your hand, then your hand will become sticky. As a result, you will have to go wash your hands. So if I were filling this in in my bubble map over here, or excuse me, in my graphic organizer, the first thing I would put in is ice cream melts. Okay, So what are my effects that I listed in here about what happens when ice cream melts? Okay, The first thing it would, that could happen is your hand will become sticky. The second thing I could also put that I will have to go and wash my hands. The third text structure is problem and solution. Okay, We all know problem and solution. You have a problem, you try and find a solution. So a good definition for it would be the text gives information about a problem and explains one or more solutions. So the text is going to give you a problem and then it's going to tell you possible ways that you could fix that problem or ways that the problem has been fixed. Some clue words that you can look for, problem, conflict, solution and resolution. And we all know that these two, problem and conflict, are synonyms for each other along with solution and resolution. Okay. Next we have our visual. You could use just a simple graphic organizer, list your problem at the top and possible solutions down at the bottom. Okay. Here's an example. If your ice cream melts before you finish, put it back into the freezer. Okay. Simple. So my problem would be that my ice cream is melting. 
A possible solution for my problem would be to stick it back in the freezer. And you may have other solutions, but in this example, I'm just giving one possible solution. Another solution could be, though, that you throw your ice cream away. You get a new ice cream. So those are all possible solutions. The fourth tech structure that we are going to be talking about is compare and contrast. And we're all very familiar with the words compare and contrast. Compare means to tell things how things are alike. And to contrast means to tell how they're different. So a good definition would be, the text talks about similarities and differences between people, places, things, etc. And we all know what etc. means. That means that it's not limited to just this. It could be so much more than just that. Some of the clue words that you can look for to help you recognize whether it's a compare and contrast, same and different, both or neither, in contrast, and on the other hand. So if you see any of these clues, it's a good hint to you of what kind of text structure you're reading. Possible visuals that you can use. The first one is just a very simple Venn diagram. You know, the two things that are different go on the outside of the circles. In the inner circle, you would put the things that they have in common. And we also have a double bubble map where you would put your two topics in the middle. The things they have in common would go in between the two circles. And then the things that they have that are not in common would go around the outside edges. Okay, so here's an example. Although ice cream and vegetables are both food, ice cream is less healthy and eaten as a dessert. Vegetables, however, are a side dish to a meal. So I could put, I would take both of my topics. So I have ice cream and vegetables. I would put ice cream in one circle, vegetables in the other. In the middle, I would put that they are both food. So that would go in the middle. On the outside circles, on ice cream, I would write that it's less healthy. That is also eaten as a dessert. And for vegetables, I would put they're healthy and they're eaten as a side. One more to go. Okay, the last one we're going to talk about is chronological sequence or order. Now, you may see it written in different ways. Chronological is one way to say it. Sequence is another way to say it. And order is another way to say it. So, if you see any one of these words, it means the same structure. Nothing's changed. Okay, so a good definition would be the text outlines chronological events or a list of steps in a procedure. So, just so we're on the same page, chronological means to sequence, beginning to end, just as we do everything else. Okay? Possible clue words that you could use. You could look at the order of events. Does it tell you what is going to happen first, second, third, fourth? Is it history? Is it giving you instructions or does it have steps? Another good thing for you to look at are signal words. And we all know the signal words. First, next, then, finally, and etc. Okay? There are two possible visuals that you could use. You could use a simple flow chart that shows the events and then moving forward. You could also use a timeline where you would draw the straight line and then add the events along the outside edges. So an example, want delicious ice cream? Yeah. First scoop it into a bowl, then top it with sprinkles. Finally grab a spoon and enjoy. So if I were sequencing these events using my timeline to prove that it's chronological structure, stru sequence structure, or order structure, first I would put maybe scoop it into a bowl, top it with sprinkles, and grab a spoon and enjoy. Okay, so those are the five text structures we're going to be talking about this week. Uh, hope to see you soon.